The young employee of Vetugo heads to work to take over a colleague's shift, unaware that this particular day could mark his final commute to the store, as his journey home may not be a safe one. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Rewind or Die. If you have any game or video suggestions, you know the drill, send it to my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that in mind, let's begin. Keith calls Frankie to request Tony, Frankie's flatmate, to cover the evening shift since Michelle, one of their co-workers, hasn't shown up for work. However, Tony isn't prepared to work that day and suggests that Dave should cover Michelle's absence, but the store is apparently too busy and needs more staff. Despite Tony's reluctance, he has no other option but to comply with Keith's request and head to work as instructed. While on his way to work, Tony comes across a lone duck sitting by a metal jump fire, seemingly trying to keep warm. Suddenly, he's ambushed by an odd-looking homeless person who warns Tony that death is hot on his heels and to day could be his last day. Although shaken by the stranger's ominous words, Tony tries to brush off the encounter and labels the homeless person as a weirdo. Arriving at vet to go a DVD rental store where he works, Tony stores his backpack in the lockers to prepare for his shift. While checking the calendar left on the countertop, he notices that the date is November 29th, 1997. As he greets an impatient customer who has been waiting for over 10 minutes, Tony apologizes and explains that the store is short-staffed today. However, the customer isn't satisfied with his explanation and demands to speak to the manager, as Kevin's would do. Tony responds by rebuking the customer for trying to buy an adult film, causing him to feel embarrassed and quickly leave with his selection. As Tony starts his shift, he realizes that none of his co-workers are around, and even Dave, who is always present, is nowhere to be seen. While searching for him in what appears to be a break room, he finds Dave's mobile phone left unattended on a chair with a woman's voice emanating from it. She seems to be calling out to someone on the other end when a creepy, demonic laugh interrupts the conversation. Tony feels unnerved by the eerie incident but dismisses it, assuming that Dave must be involved in some bizarre activity. A movie buff customer then walks into the store and shares several movie facts with Tony, expressing his enthusiasm. However, after that, he abruptly bends himself in half and runs off, pretending to be a rocket or a plane, leaving Tony understandable bewildered. Despite the bizarre encounter, Tony resumes his search for Dave without mentioning it to anyone. Eventually, Tony finds Dave sleeping in the restroom and wakes him up. Irritated, Dave complains to Tony that he keeps getting interrupted every time he uses the restroom, insinuating that everyone working with him is lazy, which is quite interesting for him to say when he himself sleeps on the toilet instead of working and actually using the toilet for it's intended for. As as Tony continues with his shift, he is approached by Timothy, a reporter from the Evening Standard who is conducting interviews in the neighborhood regarding recent disappearances. Tony informs Timothy that he and his colleagues don't know much about the matter. Though disappointed, Timothy understands and encourages Tony to contact him if he learns anything new. Shortly after, the reporter departs from the store. Dave begins to complain about the town, expressing his belief that it is getting worse and worse, insinuating the town as becoming more and more dangerous. As Timothy continues his investigation, he becomes increasingly determined to uncover the truth behind the strange disappearances. Suddenly, he hears the sound of a car crashing and rushes to investigate. When he arrives at the scene, he discovers a white van belonging to a local butcher shop that has collided with a street pole. The area is covered in blood and there are boxes scattered around with a severed pig set right in the middle of them. As Timothy approaches the scene, he is attacked by a masked killer, catching him completely off guard, showing that the masked killer is unhappy with Timothy, asking too many questions and trying to get to the bottom of the disappearances. As the closing time approaches, Tony notices an email on the computer from Keith, his boss, with instructions on how to properly close the shop. 
Keith sounds quite frustrated in the mail, as this is not the first time he has had to send these instructions to the staff. As Tony is discussing the closing duties with Dave, the latter appears to be in a rush to leave and suggests that Tony should handle the closing alone. This angers Tony, who can't believe Dave's laziness. Dave then reveals that he is going out with Michelle tonight and needs to prepare beforehand. Tony is even more frustrated when he learns that Michelle wasn't actually sick and had light to get the day off, causing him to come in on his day off to cover for her, for people who just want to go on a night out, being completely inconsiderate to the other people around them who do them favors. Tony heads towards the front door to lock up the store, but is intercepted by a detective who is waiting outside to speak with them. The detective explains that he is investigating a series of recent disappearances and mentions that all of the missing persons had one thing in common, a video to go account. He asks Tony if he would be willing to let him check the customer transaction data to see if there is a correlation between the date of their disappearance and their last rental from the store. Tony, eager to assist with the investigation, quickly retrieves the necessary customer files for the detective to examine. As Tony finishes closing up the store and takes out the trash, a familiar face appears by the dumpster. It's Captain, a homeless man with an eye patch who often sleeps in the area. Tony recognizes him and the exchange greetings. Captain shares with Tony some news about another missing person, showing that the reporter who visited the store earlier was actually the third person to go missing that week. Tony expresses his disappointment and fear, questioning the effectiveness of the authorities in catching whoever is responsible for the disappearances. Moments later, a masked killer who was seen attacking the reporter earlier starts knocking on the shop's window, attempting to enter. Tony doesn't seem to recognize the person behind the mask, while remaining calm and informing the individual that the shop is closed. However, as the killer continues to stare at him without moving, Tony's irritation grows. Eventually, the masked individual declares they will return, leaving Tony feeling very unnerved. Nevertheless, he proceeds to organize the videotapes accordingly. While organizing the videotapes, Tony hears a loud noise that sounds like the shattering of glass coming from the front of the store. This makes him suspect that someone might be attempting to break in. Upon investigation, Tony discovers that the window is completely shattered with a note attached to a cinder block that reads, Not long now. Piglet. This is a clear indication that Tony is the next potential target of the masked killer who is now hunting him down. After discovering the shattered window and the ominous note, Tony immediately contacts the store owner, Keith, to inform him of the situation. Keith, while clearly irritated at Tony for some reason, decides to come down to the shop to assess the damage for himself. He instructs Tony to board up the window as quickly as possible to prevent anyone from stealing the valuable video tapes. Soon after the phone rings, Tony picks it up to hear the heavy breathing of the masked killer on the other end, almost as if he had learned it from a horror film. The killer eerily warns Tony that they will have fun tonight, sending shivers down Tony's spine as he realizes he is alone in the store late at night with a potential killer on the loose. Tony, trembling with fear after the terrifying phone call, makes a quick decision to leave the store immediately and not wait for Keith. But as he reaches for the back door, he hears a blood-curdling scream, followed by a loud thud, which blocks his only escape route. Tony realizes he cannot risk using the main door as it might lead him straight to the killer, and instead thinks fast and climbs into the air vents. The killer soon enters the store, calling out to Tony and searching for him, even trying to stick weapons through the vents to capture him. Tony realizes he's not safe and must quickly find another hiding place to evade the killer. As Tony crawls out of the vent, he is confronted with a gruesome sight, a lifeless body lying in a pool of blood next to the emergency exit. Before he can process what he's just seen, he is cut off guard by Slaw, a killer wearing a pig mask who have been stalking him all along. Slaw appears disappointed that Tony tried to run away from him as all he wants is to play a 
game with them, revealing some seriously disturbing mental issues. Tony sprints as fast as he can, but in the chaos, he slips and hits his head, causing him to black out and be cut by Slaw. As Tony regains his consciousness, he finds himself trapped inside a cage that Slaw had set up for him. He's utterly confused and scared about what is happening to him. Slaw, wearing his pig mask, informs Tony he has a game planned for him, but it's not quite ready just yet. This revelation makes Tony realize that the other missing people were probably kidnapped and subjected to the same gruesome fate, which of course makes him very unhappy for what awaits him in the future. And by that, I mean the next few minutes. Without hesitation, Tony manages to break free from the cage and crawl through a small hole in the wall. He emerges in a room that is a gruesome sight to behold, with blood pooled on the floor and tally marks etched into the wall. As he investigates further, he comes across a fresh skeleton that is suspended from a hook on the wall, and to his horror, he finds a key to the basement in its mouth. Tony realizes that if he doesn't find a way out of there soon, he may meet the same fate as the people before him. But his luck changes when he stumbles upon the security room and finds a key that could unlock his cell, giving him a glimmer of hope for escape. Upon opening his own cage door, Tony discovers Captain locked up in another room and pleading for help. Despite being shocked to see Captain alive, Tony promises to aid him and uses the basement key to search for a tool that could unlock the door. As he enters the basement, he comes across yet another skeleton hanging from the ceiling, confirming the brutality of the killer's actions. However, the noise he makes alerts Slaw to his presence, prompting Tony to hurry up with his search. In the basement, Tony discovers a chunk of flesh that contains a key to the van, increasing his chances of escape. However, as he opens one of the lockers, a skeleton wearing a pig mask falls out with a note attached to it that reads, Pickaboo, a chilling reminder of the twisted game Slaw plays with his victims before killing them. Once Tony finally finds the van and unlocks it, the alarm goes off, causing him to panic at the thought of being caught by Slaw, which causes him to run back to his cage. Tony being back there just in time, the killer seems pleased, laughing manically as he sees that all his piglets are behaving very well. Captain is locked in an incinerator and the second incinerator next to him is turned on and working, suggesting that if Tony doesn't hurry, that may be Captain's fate burning to a crisp. Tony discovers a cut-off limb that holds a lever, allowing him to access the freezer where he finds skeletons hanging from the ceiling and a crowbar. However, as he becomes increasingly confident in his ability to escape, he is quickly caught by Slaw and locked up in one of the freezers. The floor then suddenly collapses and he is knocked out by a door, falling into the sewers below. Unfortunately, Slaw is not far behind and begins chasing Tony through the tunnels, enjoying Tom and Jerry type of chase. As Tony continues to explore the sewers, he notices signs and equipment that suggest it is a water treatment and waste disposal plant. The incinerators and other machinery reinforce this idea. Tony comes across a worker's office in the sewers where the worker is sitting at his desk facing his computer. Tony is relieved to find someone alive and hopes the worker can help him, but it's too late as Law has already gotten to him. Tony takes the worker's keycard from his lifeless body and continues on his desperate search for a way out. Despite numerous close calls and chases, Tony eventually emerges from the sewers only to be pursued once again by Slaw. However, he manages to evade him and stumbles upon a barely conscious security guard hiding in a vent. The guard reveals that his friend and co-worker Aaron was burned alive in one of the incinerators, the same fate that Captain may face if Tony doesn't rescue him soon enough. The guard also reveals that he has a gun hidden in his locker, urging Tony to retrieve it and put an end to Slaw once and for all. Tony successfully unlocks the door to the incinerator, freeing Captain from his captivity. Although Captain wishes to assist Tony in catching the murderer, he is too feeble to do so. Tony advises Captain to conceal himself and wait for further instructions until Tony can apprehend the killer or just kill him. While searching the incinerator, Tony finds a key that opens Aaron's locker. Inside the locker, he discovers a code that enables him to enter the loft gate, which then grants him access to the security guard's handgun.
Soon enough, Slaw finds him again, and even though Tony shoots at him multiple times, Slaw manages to somehow withhold the power of the bullet. He eventually gets shot, however, which gives Tony a chance to escape. As Tony makes his way to the basement, he discovers an altar and a mysterious book, realizing that Slaw was merely a pun of a greater evil. Tony recites the incantations, Klato Baradani, which unleashes a massive demonic pig from the depths of hell. With his hand gone, Tony engages in a fierce battle against the demonic creature, determined to defeat the evil spirit once and for all. Tony comes across a small dog that he recognizes from the streets, who has also been trapped by the killer in one of the cages. Tony frees the dog, who is grateful for his rescue. As Tony tries to leave, the masked killer attacks him once again. The killer seems to possess supernatural abilities, possibly given to him by the demonic pig through the rituals performed in the basement. Despite this, Tony fights back and eventually manages to push the killer into the meat grinder, defeating him, hopefully for the last time. It is revealed that Slaw was actually a butcher who owned a meat shop that specialized in mystery meats. However, it becomes apparent that the mystery meat was actually made from the bodies of his victims, whom he referred to as his little piglets, and who had been disappearing without a trace. Another killer butcher that feeds unsuspecting people human meat. A cliche, I know. He calls out for the dog and the captain that he managed to save earlier, and they all leave this terrible place place together. In a different ending, however, if Tony fails to save the captain or the dog, he is left with no other choice but to leave the place alone and sad, feeling a deep sense of regret and sorrow for not being able to rescue them. The events of the encounter seem to have unfolded in just one day. Tony was captured by the butcher in the late evening of November 29th, but in the ending scene, detectives mention that it is now November 30th at 1.30. The detectives are seen questioning Keith Williams, the owner of vet to go store. They suspect Keith as a potential kidnapper as Tony went missing in the same area where others had gone missing, making Keith a person of interest since he was the only one present when one person was killed and Tony was abducted. It's possible that Keith was the butcher all along, given that all his victims were customers of vet to go making him a prime suspect. He also seemed to have a strong dislike for his staff who didn't follow his strict closing procedure. Procedures. Additionally, he only worked during the mornings when most of the kidnappings took place at night. Furthermore, when the store window was broken with a cinder block, he didn't appear to be too surprised or concerned about the situation, instead showing more worry about his stock being taken. During the interview with the detectives, Keith's suspicious behavior and potential connection to the kidnappings and murders become more apparent. Many of the victims were customers of his store and he seemed to have a grudge against his staff. The fact that he never worked during the night when most of the kidnappings occurred raises more suspicion. Furthermore, Tony was attacked only after he had shared information about the missing people with the detective, suggesting that Keith or someone connected to him may have been monitoring their investigation. The reporter who had come to the store asking questions was also targeted by the butcher and met a grim fate. It seems that the killer had prior knowledge of the reporter's inquiries and made sure to eliminate any potential threats to his identity. It is possible that Dave, Tony's co-worker, was involved with the butcher in the kidnappings and murders. Tony had picked up Dave's phone and heard screams and strange diabolic laughs and a distressed woman's voice, suggesting that Dave was involved in some way or another in strange, ritualistic type of actions. It's possible that they worked together to eliminate the customers they hated, experimented with occultism, and sold mysterious meats made from from their victims. And that's about it for this video folks. What are your thoughts and opinions about the story and its mysteries? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, it's been your host Dar. Thank you folks for being here and I will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic day.